I'm here today to talk about how you may guide your agile team, especially a growing one, with an architectural North Star. And what is an architectural North Star? How, how it can help your team to be more agile. First, a little bit about me. I'm an engineering director at WeWork. Um, I'm one of the early engineers at WeWork. For, about fa for the past six years, I grew from an individual contributor to a manager, then a manager of managers. And for the last three years, I've been focusing on building high-performing team that addresses critical business problems at WeWork, ranging from growth products to pricing to billing and payments. And WeWork and WeWork offers beautiful space for all type of business to thrive, from freelancers, solo entrepreneurs, to Fortune 500 companies. WeWork um, is known for its beautiful common areas and uh, that facilitate conversations and interactions. And you may see some photos on the, on the slides. Back in 2013, when I joined WeWork, WeWork had merely six locations and 4,000 members. And today, WeWork serves over 40, 466,000 members in its 485 locations around the world. It has been tremendous to see that members love the product that, and the concept, the space as a service. With the growing customer base and buildings around the world, the complexity of the business grew with it. From the very early stage, the software engineers and product managers that, at the company had to start building products and uh, integrating other software products to help the company to grow more efficiently and operate our building more efficiently as well. And naturally, we use Agile as the framework to manage our software development process. If I may have a quick show of hands, how many of you work on a team that uses Agile? Wow. That's probably 80% of you. Just like you, we follow the Agile principles from the Agile Manifesto. We build and deliver product incrementally, and we ship frequently. We had minimal design upfront because we didn't have all the requirements, and we welcome changing requirements. The system and applications evolved very quickly to deal with the ever-changing business requirements. We believed in evolutional design and architecture of a system. We choose code over process, and the team were self-organized and were empowered to be autonomous. And we didn't overcomplicate things. When the requirement wasn't there, we, we didn't do it. We didn't code it. After all, simplicity is the, uh, is the art of the maximum, the amount of work that's not done. We moved fast and built things, and the business was growing, and the team of software engineers and products were growing too. We kept the team size relatively small. Each team was no more than six people. Then one team became two, then two became three. New team were built to tackle and uh, to tackle the expanding business problems, or you may say opportunities, and we hire new talented engineer who are driven, passionate about delivering impact to the business. And when the team is assembled, they get the requirements, they figure out their ceremonies, they understand the problem domain, then go on to create solutions. Agile practice work. Then we continue to hire great engineers, continue to grow. Very quickly, we had dozens of Agile teams. And the number of pull requests merged and deployed every day was, it was growing rapidly. Then we start seeing some cracks and some problems that our Agile teams cannot resolve themselves. Some seemingly simple product requirements will require a major refactoring. And most importantly, the business landscape was changing a lot of the early assumptions that we built our software on were no longer true. And the simple, solu simple solutions we put on early on and the amount of work that were not done early 
now need to be addressed. Things were working until it isn't. So we start hearing some signals of the common, we start hearing signals of some common concerns. Service A and Service B, they were built by two different teams. They're kind of similar, doing similar things, but they are different. Or a service was built to do X, and then was repurposed to do Y, now it's very hard to expand its capability. And architecture is changing so quickly, a holistic view is missing. These are all inconsistency happened and require additional energy for the Agile team to, to address in their day-to-day. -day. And these problems constantly become blockers to the decision-making of the team and harm the autonomy of the team and ultimately slow the team down. If we take a step back, we'll look at it, what happened? When we start analyzing the cause of it, we realize when, you, when, you, when initially you had a small number of teams, it was easy to align the team to go towards the same architectural goal, and everyone was building towards the right, same direction. And when you have a large number of teams who share different contexts, started having, focusing on different business goals, the architectural direction started diverge. And each team followed the agile methodology. They practically just do enough and just in time to, um, to carry out the business goal. And some of the design decisions were made very fast and sometimes in silo. And over time, different teams embarked on different architectural directions. And each team may be hyper-performing, but they're achieving the local maximum with Agile. On the grand scheme of things, the entire architecture isn't coherent. And over time, you may end up, we end up with a piecemeal architecture. And to the team, it feels like bumper cars. The Agile team use their reaction and use their experience to navigate. How do we address it? How do we have the team to advance towards the same direction At this point, you might be thinking, we can reduce the amount of auto autonomy in the Agile team and add in a little bit more coordination. That's what a lot of the organization, uh, that's the approach a lot of organizations have taken to coordinate architectural changes in the Agile process. For example, some organizations use Scrum of Scrums for large projects, but you can only do so many of them. And some, have architecture design committee to review the proposals, and some have, embed, have embedded architects and the team to coordinate decisions. Or some may just fall back to go back to waterfall and to have a big design up front. While these are all viable approaches, I don't think they fit well with the spirit of autonomous which is the foundation of the Agile practice. And if we think about it, is autonomy really the problem here? As a true believer in Agile, I'm not ready to give up autonomy for the team yet. And how can we align the seemingly disoriented team without adding more coordination but align them to go towards the same direction. What's the missing ingredient? The key is alignment. Introduce Architecture North Star. It is an approach and exercise to align your team that are attack solving different business problems on the same architecture direction. It can, give you a, uh, it can give your team a good sense of where the architecture is evolving as a whole and help them with the daily decision making. This is, an architecture, this is my definition of an architecture North Star. It's a coherent, forward-looking architecture designed upon the shared understanding of requirements and constraints to help the team to orientate and navigate. How is this better than the other approaches of coordination? 
the key is to come up with a North Star that's based on shared understanding. The, the emphasis on the, on the shared understanding requirements gives your team focus. A shared understanding help the, to help ensure the team are moving toward the same direction and under, have a whole holistic scope, a view of the scope of the problem. And usually an agile team is usually um, tasked with tasked with solving a specific problem, only seeing a piece of the puzzle and address a very specific problem. Over time, the siloed knowledge and the missing the bigger picture causing the architecture to be inconsistent and which leads to poor integration and the uh, wrong abstraction. Therefore, it is important to build upon a shared understanding. Having a piecemeal architecture is a real risk in the agile practice. Equipped with the sheer understanding of requirement and constraint, your team can come up with a better chance, uh, have a better chance to come up with a coherent design. It can help your team to not unconsciously creating haphazardly structured code, duct taped code together, and believing the right intention in your team that want to build sustainable and well-structured architecture they just need a guidance of where they should be going. With this, with this alignment, you need less coordination. The North Star should be unambiguous and with just enough information to help the team to make decisive, fast decisions. And the North Star should be highly visible. It should be highly visible not just to your engineering team, but to your product team, to your business team. And once the North Star is created, it can help everyone to speak the same language. And in the future requirements gathering, in the future development, it can also serve as a base for further requirement discussion. And last but not least, the Agile team are still empowered to be autonomous. In this world, um, in this case, the premises of self-organizing team that, helped, that originally helped you build the high-performing team is not compromised. With the guiding star, we can trust the team to make a well-educated decision in their sprint. These are what I think are the benefits of having an architecture North Star. Should you do an architecture North Star in the day one of a new project? I don't recommend it. You don't, have, you don't have the requirements yet, and you don't know what may change. But once, you, once, your, spring, uh, once your Agile team has have been running for a while, you realize, OK, some of, the battle, some of the hypothesis and assumptions you have have been battle tested. Some turned out to be true. Some turned out to be wrong. At that point, it's a good time to have, an, to have a discussion and exercise of the architecture of North Star. And in this case, the concept of this architecture North Star is different from the big design up front, because the goal isn't to come up with all the answers and the details, and it doesn't negate the flexible development in the agile practice. And then secondly, an architecture, an architecture North Star plays nicely with autonomy while knowing a full, your team, while knowing a full picture of where the architecture is heading, your team can continue to take an iterative, agile approach that delivers value in small chunk. And the discovery in, the agile, in their daily agile practice can, in turn, feed back to the North Star. So how do we come up with the architecture North Star? The exercise of coming this North Star is a, is a discovery journey. It is also a process of creating alignment. Um, I'll be fooling myself. I'm standing here to tell you how you can build an ideal architecture North Star, but I would love to point out a set of best practices, a best practices that with agile pr practice in mind and some of the learnings and um, exercise that we went through. Every business and product is different. 
Every business and product is different. It's hard to be prescriptive about the architecture. The framework that we used um, to, design, uh, to, delight, to design for the complexity was domain-driven design. It is an effective approach to describe a complex problem, and the output of our North Star is a set of principles and anti-patterns, a context map, which I'll, I'll explain in a second, and the context map with owner for each domain. And the context map is basically a high-level view of your key problems and domains that can help your engineer and product understand where they can take strategic decisions. And if you want to come up with a system diagram, you can, but I would love, um, I, would, I would suggest to leave enough space to let your agile team to make decisions in their day to day. But it's important to come up with a set of principles and enterprise items and the overall view to get everyone on the same page. So this is an example of our context map in sales, pricing, membership, and product domain. Each domain can be further broke down, but this is just an example. So now a few tips to uh, a few tips for you to create your architecture North Star. Number one, involve your stakeholders or your customer. The most, the most significant complexity of many applications is not technical. The complexity is in the problem domain itself. If you think a number of engineers go into a room and come up with a big reveal of the architecture North Star, you may be disappointed. Engineers are a key part of this exercise because they know the limitation and they're the builder of the system. But as engineers, we don't have the intimate knowledge um, of the future requirements, and, um, and these requirements are fundamental to drive the decision in the North Star. And very likely, these are the decisions that live in the mind or documents of, from your stakeholders and product managers. Therefore, the exercise has to be a joint effort with your product managers and stakeholders. Interview them to hear about what they have to say. It's even better if you can have a live discussion with them with, relevant, um, with everyone in the same room. Having a facilitator with strong system design skills and the ability to architect complex systems definitely helps. And this is where the role of the lead developer or architect uh, shines, and they can help facilitate and drive decisions. Number two, some requirements are more important than the other. Prioritize your requirements. Identify the requirements that are significant to your architecture and may fundamentally disrupt your architecture if you don't pay attention to them. And focusing on deciphering those requirements and, uh, um, and make sure those requirements, uh, the architectural significant requirements, um, are, they are true that will actually be, um, be impacting your architecture. And remember, the North Star shouldn't be designed for a far-reaching future. Be practical. Design depends on the stage of your company. Design it for six months out, and most one year out. And focus on the core domains. And by core domains, I mean the core problem space of your business. How to, de how to de identify what is a core domain? Ask yourself a few questions. Is it something that you, you want to build versus buy? If it's something you can buy off the shelf, can f and that's something that can, f can fulfill your needs, why not buy it? Is it worth your time building it? Is it so, is it so fundamental to your business that can give you an ad a competitive advantage? And the core domain are also usually the domain, the problem space, with most cross-cutting concerns, a lot of teams that depend on it and a lot of teams are tasked with solving that problem. 
and limit the amount of the core domains to a small number. And when, once you come up with each problem space, pay attention to the boundary between these um, domains and define the boundary carefully because once within a boundary, within a problem space, your agile team can have the room to be autonomous and to solve problem. And once you have to, if you want to change the boundary, you want, that's when you want to be more careful. You want to carefully design the interaction when you go across the boundary. And make it light and iterate. Don't forget the exercise of coming up an architecture North Star is to help your team to make better decisions and fast, decisive decisions. If your architecture North Star is big, it's harder to update. Also, it's harder for your team to use it to incorporate in their, data, in their software development process. Your North Star shouldn't change very often if you build it on the, architect uh, on the uh, architecture's significant requirements, unless your business uh, the business fundamentals changes. And the focus of this North Star should also be focusing on providing just enough architecture rather than a big design up front. Equipped with the architecture North Star, your team can make better decisions and faster decisions in their day to day. The autonomous teams can be more autonomous because they are assured that everyone have the same view of where the architecture is evolving, and your, team and your teams don't need to be in constant coordination. And hopefully, this will lead to less wasted work and effort and reduce the frustration when there's a big misalignment and your team have to deal with that. And you, as the de lead developer, can continue to scale the use of agile, or, uh, agile methodology in your organization, and your team can continue to scale up while maintaining the high performance they have always had. Try it, let me know how it goes, and you can find me in the office hour if you have any questions. Thank you.